Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Angular Air. I'm your host, Justin. And on today's episode, we are going to get an introduction to Angular Elements. I'm super excited. Uh, I love Angular Elements. It's always fun to, to do work in that space. So can't wait to learn more information and, and meet our guests and, and get on with our content. But before we do that, we are going to say hi to our panelists, and then we'll get into it. Joining us today, we have Alyssa. Uh, chicken Hello. Alyssa, how's it going? Oh, it is going marvelous, especially when you're in a chicken onesie. So it, it's a little you're droopy so to the side. Does it need yeah, like an energy drink or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. Did you say memory leak? <laughs> no, I, I said energy drink. Energy drink, but it sounds like there's a memory leak in my chicken onesie. <laughs> nice. I love you all, <laughs> Mike. What's going on, Mike? Not too much. I I, I have costume too. Let's see it. I got my cookies. Aww. I brought on my cookie monster. I nice. I'm doing, I'm doing well. Monster. And this, this is way too warm, so I'm not wearing this very long. <laughs> not but the whole time. OK, all right. Oh, it's tomorrow, so. Bonnie's with us. Bonnie, how's it going? I'm well, I'm I'm really excited to be here. And I love doing the show on Fridays. Happy Friday, everyone. But I'm feeling really like I need a hat. So uh, maybe I maybe I need to get a hat one of these days because these two are so much fun. <laughs> hey, Bonnie, we just dressed up as uh, dream host and, and co-host, so that's what that's our outfit today. That's there you go. With. There you go. I know. No, I, I'm going to have a costume next time, Raris. I'll get one just so I can be part of this uh, fun little group here. There you go. There you go. We'll run an hour long. You know, you still have time to go run and, and get a costume <laughs> in the middle of the presentation. Alyssa said I should put two cups on top of my head. I'm like, Alyssa, what is that costume called if I just put two, like, cups right there? What is that? Oh, me and my sisters had this game growing up called the Portable Hat Show. I don't think we got the concept that all hats are portable. Uh, and so we <laughs> would find things on the go and attach them to our heads, just ridiculous things, and walk around like that. And we were like, the portable hat show, right? So in, you know, Bonnie's like, I don't have a costume. I'm like, if you have two cups, you have a costume, Bonnie, like on the head. Let me so. see what I can come up with. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you posted. We'll check back in throughout the show and see if Bonnie can come up with something goofy for a hat. It would it would be appreciated. Thank you. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> What I really want to know, Alyssa, is, is what would we need to do to reboot the Portable Hat Show? <laughs> get my, Can we get that back? I might be able to make that happen. Special edition, but you all would have to wear portable hats. And what you and Mike are wearing don't count. Like, that's a real hat. It's so. a portable hat. What are you talking about? <laughs> I can look. I can go places with it. I think she's talking about like a – it has to be like a do-it-yourself hat. Um, it, it can't be something that started out like, life as a hat. Yes! That's that's this is Portable funny. Hat Corporate Edition. So like if I'm I put this dust rag on top of it, then I created a portable hat. <laughs> that's exa yes, that's exactly it. Oh my God, you would have fit along with us so well growing up. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, everybody's no, no, no. probably waiting for us to get to our content. That's a, let's head into it and meet our guest. Matt's joining us today. Matt, how's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Welcome, doing great. great to have you. Yeah. We're an extra I'm... silly show today just for you. I hope that's okay. I, I love that background. It. That angular is like perfectly located. It's mwah. very nice. Yeah. Very Classy. nice. So, Matt, you want uh, to tell our viewers? Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> I've been watching for a while and learned a lot and met a lot of um, well, Matt, but been introduced to a lot of people that I've learned a lot from. So I'm excited to be here today to talk about uh, Angular Elements and hopefully help someone else out. Awesome. So awesome. if you're ready, I can present. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. Am I live? We're all set. Yeah, we see your slide. Okay. Before you start. All right, cool. Are we okay to interrupt the presentation yes. with questions or is this something you want us to wait till the end? No, go for it. Okay, cool. I don't have anything yet. I just wanted to make sure beforehand. Did you have a comment about okay. the opening Nothing slide? Nothing too hard right? though. I do. What's that logo on the right? Uh, 
Uh oh. Did my okay. audio just die? Um, so or... this is an introduction to angular elements. Hold on, Matt. Before you get into this, uh, uh, we can't okay. find your Twitter handle. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, it should be Matt underscore Carson. All right. And what's the logo on the right? That's Angular Elements. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We're going to leave you alone. Okay. Angular Elements. And this is our agenda today. So we'll go over what an Angular Element is. We'll do a basic demo, um, learn how to use multiple Angular Elements. Uh, we'll learn a little bit about slots and how to use them. And then we'll build, combine, and deploy locally. And then we'll try to deploy to the cloud with Firebase. So what is an Angular element? Um, before we talk about that, we kind of have to understand what a web component is. And um, most of you probably know what a web component is, but um, by webcomponents.org, web components are a set of web platform APIs that allow you to create new custom reusable encapsulated HTML tags to use in web pages and web apps. So really the power of a web component is that it can be used um, regardless of what framework you're using. Um, and it creates like a, a new tag, like a new a div, but it's you know a custom element. Um, so Angular elements are really just web components that started out as um, Angular components. Um, and then they can be used in the DOM. So like I said before, they're framework agnostic and they really allow you to pass um, a, a co component, an Angular component to someone else without them having any knowledge of Angular. Um, so it could be as simple as you send them a source, like a JavaScript source file, and then the tag, and then they can use those components in um, whatever app they want. Um, so why use Angular Elements? Um, kind of reiterating here again, but it's just a way to use an Angular component in a framework or a static website. So they'd work in React, Vue, uh, Angular JS, just a static HTML file, um, WordPress, or Wix. So um, one example might be if you have a large business and maybe you have a React team, a Vue team, an Angular JS team, and maybe you have a date picker or a autocomplete, and you want to use them, um, you want to have a consistent component um, for your organization rather than um, building one for React, Vue, and Angular JS, or even Angular. Um, you could create a web component or an Angular element and then build it once, and then if you have to update it, um, you can update that one uh, web component and you don't have, to, if, don't have to worry about them not being or being different on different platforms. Which you would be surprised, or at least I was surprised by the amount of teams that have this issue mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that have that this many different frameworks even on the front end um and so it's because the first time that i was going through this i was like really what's the use case but talking with more and more people it's, it's there's quite a few so <laughs> yeah. um so taking this a little bit further um a lot of companies are using back-end microservices and this is kind of a you can use web components um to kind of mirror the backend microservice. So you can create a web component that, um, like you might have a hotel that has a microservice that just sends down um, reservations that are available. Um, so you could uh, kind of combine that with a web component that maybe has a, a search um, bar and it pulls them down and you can kind of create um, building blocks, like full stack building blocks that kind of, um, pair the back end to the front end. Um, and then also you can use them um, in, in place of like a plugin on, on WordPress or Wix. Um, I don't know about you, but after being in JavaScript for you know several years, it's kind of hard to go back and look at PHP code to make like a WordPress plugin. So uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is kind of a use case too. 
Um, natively, it supports most modern browsers, so um, Chrome, Edge, uh, Firefox, Opera, and Safari are the, the current ones. Um, right now, there's no support for, no native support for uh, Internet Explorer, um, but there are some ways around that with some polyfills. Um, so now we'll look at what are the steps that are um, needed to build an Angular element. Um, we'll start with just ng-new, we'll, we'll add a new project, um, and then we'll add Angular elements with the ng-add, and then um, we'll generate a new component that we want to turn into our Angular element. Um, then there's a couple of steps in the app component or your, uh, I'm sorry, your app module or your feature module. And this is kind of where the magic happens. This is where you're turning that um, component into an Angular element. So um, the first step, if you're gonna use this Angular element inside the Angular app, you have to add the custom element schema. And then um, we're gonna remove that app component that gets bootstrapped, and we're gonna add in a manual bootstrap method um, where we're gonna create the custom element and define the custom element selector. Now, is that adding that uh, custom element schema to your module, is that something you have to do manually or does the schematic of via ng add do that for you? No, you have to do that manually. Okay. Yep. Um, and then uh, just create a component like you normally would. Um, really nothing special here. The only nuance is that um, the input names get changed to a dashed lowercase. So for example, this button label here and um, camel case will get changed to a button dash label. So that one, that one probably I spent a day trying to figure out why my inputs weren't working and found that in the Angular doc. So that's something to, to be aware of. Um, the output names are like the events. They are not changed though. So Fergus had a question before you get into the code demo. I don't know if you think now is a good time to address it. Uh, he sure. said, I'll be the first to ask the obvious. How big is the download for a single NG element? Uh, I'm skeptical for anything um, beyond hello world. Yeah, um, they are larger, but um, it seems like they've gotten a little less with Ivy. We can, when we run this code, we can see what the um, bundle size is, but that's probably one of the most obvious drawbacks to this. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add that schema in there. And then we're going going to uh, we'll just comment out the app component because we're not going to bootstrap. Then we're going to manually bootstrap. Uh, or first we're at, we'll add in a constructor. Um, we have to bring in the injector so that um, the dependency injection will work. And then I've already added a, or just added a new button component. Um, but we'll add the ng do bootstrap. And this is just like a manual bootstrap. And then inside of here, um, we're just gonna create a button variable and then we'll use this create custom element um, function. And then we're gonna pass the in. preferred button, no, but <laughs> button's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna pass in the actual button component. And then we're also going to uh, bring in the injector in the configuration file. And then there's one more line of code here, and that's going to be defining that um, 
custom component or the custom element. And we do that with uh, custom elements dot define. And then we name whatever one our select would be. So we'll call it ng air button. And then we'll assign it to the button we created in line above. Um, and that's, that's really it um, for setting it up. So now we just have to build the component. So I'm just gonna add an input and an output here. So we can see how that works. Um, on a button label. And this will just be a string and I'll set it to default. And then I'll create an output here, just custom event. And that'll be an event emitter. And then lastly, I'm going to add a button click method. And I'll just emit um, a string here. Okay. And then I'm going to do ng serve here. And then there's one more step that runs. So inside this HTML, like the main index.html, we have this app root. <clears throat> we're gonna get rid of that because we're not bootstrapping the app root. Um, and then I'm gonna add this that ng air button. Makes me uncomfortable to get rid of the app root. <laughs> <laughs> but actually I uh, have to change this too. So this, will just be a regular button. Um, Which it should say no. default once we see it, because you set it to that it, string? It should, yeah, yep. Okay. And all of this work here is just the normal Angular component stuff we're used to. You're not doing anything at the component level exactly. right now that's specific for elements. You're just building your regular Angular component. A super right, fancy yep. Angular component. Yes, one of the fanciest. So then we'll just run a uh, button click. Okay. Quick reminder to save your H index.html. Yeah. Would not oh. believe I was on stream last week and we didn't save like three files and it took us like 15 minutes before someone in chat was like, you need to save your changes. And I was like, <laughs> that's what happens when you live stream with that Mike Brocky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I'm that, very good at saving things. Apparently. <laughs> hey, so it says default. Woo! It's, our, it's yeah, working. Go ahead, Matt. You're doing great. This is awesome. Is it? Is it working? Did it emit? I did it's not. Set, I mean, it has a button. Well, yeah. So clicking if you click button. on it right now, nothing's mm -hmm. going to happen because we haven't um, added that event li listener on there. You didn't? Uh, no. Well, we did on the output, or we created the output, but we have to um, we have to add this to the event listener to the web component itself. Nothing's listening to the event. Uh, just like if you don't save, nothing yeah, happens. So. Nothing's listening. <laughs> it falls in the woods. Doesn't make us out. We don't know because we haven't uh, subscribed to that event. We haven't Would someone please listen for the event? It's stressing me out. <laughs> <laughs> Button label equals click me. Okay. I think okay. it's yeah. and to save, but we changed it to the button dash label. I dig it. Uh, and it changed to click me. So now hopefully I can remember 
the script for this. You got this, but Matt. we're gonna set. Uh, if not, Alyssa will help you. Component. <laughs> we All believe right. in you. And... It's totally easy to focus when everybody's talking. <laughs> We're going to be quiet. Let's all go back on mute and let him. Matt, you're doing such a good job. We wouldn't pick on you if we didn't love you, Matt. <laughs> you're fine. I like the company. Document up Cray selector. Okay, so then we're going to add the NG air button. And then we'll take this component and we'll do add event listener. Yes. And custom event. And then, and this is where we'll tell what to do with the event. We'll just do an alert. Um, I think it's event dot detail. That was just event. Um, <clears throat> that wasn't it. All right, component dot add event list. Go open up your um, dev tools in the browser. I live with my oh, dev tools open. Okay, that was it. I think I just had to put it after the after the uh, component, the web component. So yeah. that'll give you the emitting string. So. I think that's it for the basic demo. Um, so let, let's talk about that for a second. So you created an Angular component, a super fancy button component mm -hmm. that allowed you to essentially define your own custom event as well as an input uh, to be able to do that. So you basically just wrote Angular and there was nothing fancy about any of that. But what you did is you modified the module. Yeah, right. You modified the module to compile that component as an Angular element, which allows you to use it essentially without bootstrapping Angular, because you're just bootstrapping essentially that Angular element. Exactly. Yep. I like yep. it. So yeah, it's not. And then that. In, sorry, really quick. And then that index HTML file, the place where you change the the app root to that, is really just an example of how it would be used. Uh, when you ship your bundled component, right, your Angular element, the consumer, wherever, whatever site you put it on, would be using your JS bundle, um, but not that index HTML file. But they would do something similar in their their markup that you did in the index HTML file, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm just, yeah, I'm doing that here because otherwise I'll ha I'd have to. It's easier to just do like the ng serve, but I'll show an example actually of um, how to deploy to like locally or to the cloud. So hopefully we can see how that works too. Awesome. Nice. Um, and then on one of the last talks I did, somebody asked about um, how to do multiple Angular elements. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. You, did, you have those two lines of code that we did in the app module. Uh, well, first you got to generate the components. Um, but then in the app module, you just um, create the custom element and then define it like we did there. Um, and then obviously, if you have like five or more, then you can um, maybe use like a for loop with with a you know array of um, the element or the component and then what you want to call it, um, and then you can run that run through that. Um, I have a question, <clears throat> and you. Yeah. The, you may or may not have an answer and that's fine. So if I have two components, one of which is a child of the other. So let's say we have parent component and child component, uh, where child component is just used inside of parent. Do I need to create an angular element of both of those or just of the parent element uh, for external use? I, I believe you just have to do the parent element. Okay. Which, which is good because then you don't have to necessarily know about the inner workings of how parent component works. Just, hey, I want to be able to use parent component. So go ahead and say, hey, this is now going to be an Angular element that I want to expose. Go ahead and use it. 
that's cool. Right, and you can even use services. Because um, the child would be a dependency. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So any child, any child components would be a dependency of the parent component, and they would all be packaged with it. Would they be a dependency if they're packaged with it? Wouldn't they just be part of that? Well, I component? mean, yeah, but they would be, they would have to be included. Mm. But once you're into that component, it's just angular all the way down, right? So right. what you're doing is you're, you're exposing, you're saying, I want to expose these angular elements as custom elements that somebody could just put in their DOM, right? And then whatever they render right. internally is done angular way. So you're free to, we had a question on the chat about, could you use material and, and other libraries inside of your components that you're delivering as angular elements? And yes, you can, because inside of your component, it's all angular down, right? Um, and then it's what you do exactly. at the point where you find that custom element. That's the component that you're registering to behave like a, a web element, a custom element, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, We you can use angular material. I've done that in the past. It just it really increases the bundle size. Um, but if, if you're in a situation where it doesn't matter that much, um, then it's, it's nice to be able to use um, a library like material and um, define the styles like that. Um, so I don't know if we really need to, do you guys wanna see how to add an additional one? We're really just, um, in the app module, we're just doing these two lines of code with a new um, component. It's really so that concept that like, if you're, when you think about it, like you're, you're talking about like with Angular Elements, this is gonna get bundled into like the JS file that you're gonna deliver to somebody to run on some external property. Um, so it could be one component like you have here, or like you're mentioning, you could say like, look, I want to build one bundle that I want to ship to some third party site that's going to have three different components that they could use. And we could put those all into the one, right? And distribute that as one. And that's kind of what you're yeah. talking about here, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so you get one uh, JS bundle and it could have 20 different web components in it. And then you just need to know the source of that JavaScript file and then, um, the selectors for their custom elements. So the the really, really cool thing, in my opinion, about Angular Elements is that, say, so you've created a component or two or a dozen, whatever, of all of these different components that you want to expose as Angular Elements. Well, there's nothing to say that you can't do both. And by both, I mean exposing that component as an Angular Element as well as uh, including it as part of an ng module to allow for consumption of the same component in Angular, as well as exposing it as an Angular element, because it's just a matter of how that component gets packaged up. Which is All right, really, yeah. really cool. All um, and I think that another good point on that is like, um, I think a lot of the things when people start talking or getting into elements, it's the thought of a small little piece, right? But it can really be a composition of, of some behavior of a mini app or, and you talk about it, Matt, in the beginning with this concept of micro front ends and connecting those pieces is this concept that like, you can ship as an angular element, a, a full working mini piece of, of UX, right? So let's say you had something like a, a two factor off behavior of modals opening and steps to ask, you know, you could ship that as an element and allow somebody to put that on their site and, and have that open and, and do all of that UX behavior all bundled into the one piece. And then like Mike, you said, that could be used, shipped to use on an external site or used in your own internal apps. Uh, you get that benefit. I see we've got slots next. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's look at slots. Um, slots are just an HTML element and it's part of the web component technology suite. Um, and it's basically just a placeholder inside of your custom element um, that allows you to pass markup into the, um, the web component or the Angular element. 
So these can be pretty powerful and they're not too complicated to do. The one thing you need to remember with this is that um, uh, the viewing encapsulation needs to be set to shadow DOM um, or it won't work. And I'll probably forget that in the next two minutes when I go to do the example, but um, that needs to be turned to shadow DOM. And then you also have to add a slot element inside of your Angular component and give it a name attribute and then um, add some, you can, you can or don't have to um, add default markup into the slot element. Um, and then when you want to use it on the, in the web component, um, you just add a span element with the slot attribute set to the name of the Angular element that you want targeted or the, the name of the slot name. <laughs> You'll see. Um, and then you'll add that markup inside of that span. And then the default markup will be replaced with what you put in there. So let's look at that and maybe it'll make more sense than what I just said. So this is our button component and we'll just do a slot. And we'll give the name title. Call default title. So that's that's really all we need to do in the component. Um, and then inside of our index file, we're going to go inside the ng air button, and then we're going to do a span, and we'll say slot equals title. Now inside of this, we can put whatever markup we want. So I'm just going to do an H1 tag. Um, and then we'll say, this is the new title. And it should replace, um, it should replace that default title with this. And do you need to do the view encapsulation shadow DOM at this point? As well? <laughs> yeah. So th this is what happens if you don't do that. So it'll still have the default title. And I think if I refresh it, it stays there for a second, but that's why we need the. Uh, So then it changes to this is the new title and it has the H1 tag there. So, so that's slots. Um, and obviously you could, you could have more than one. Um, and I think if you just have one, I don't know that you actually need to add that name attribute, but um, So next we'll look at um, how to build, combine, and deploy locally. Um, so on a normal, when you or when you build a, an Angular project, or project you're gonna have um, like three main JavaScript files, the main, um, the runtime, and the um, polyfills. So if you didn't combine them, then you're gonna have to import like if you want a developer to be able to use your web component, they're gonna have to import three separate files, which probably is an idea, ideal. Um, so the way I've done it is just with a simple node script. Um, but recently I've discovered there's an NPM library that Manfred Steyer built called NGX Build Plus, And it gives you the ability to combine the JS files during the build just into a single bundle so that um, I'm gonna show the node script, but that's an alternative too. Um, and then to build the element, um, I'll just show you how to do the um, build script to, to run all that together. 
Um, but again, you can use the NGX uh, build plus as well. And then we'll um, try to deploy this locally with an HTTP server. Um, and we'll create a new HTML file that's completely outside of Angular. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a concat.js file, and this is going to be our node file. Um, and this is really all the code that's required. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install these two libraries here, and then I'll go through this. Okay, so really we're just taking, uh, we're creating an array of files. Um, these are the three files that get outputted in the distribution folder. Um, we're making sure there's an elements folder already there. And then um, we're going to concatenate all those files into a, a new file inside the elements folder. Um, and in our case here, we don't really have any uh, CSS, but um, you could also copy your styles.css file into your elements folder. Um, so yeah, next I'm gonna add a build script. Um, and it's just a normal ng build dash dash prod, but we're also going to turn off um, output hashing. So we'll do output hashing none. And then after that's finished, we're going to do um, node concat.js. So we'll run that um, node script and combine all those files. Um, and the reason we do this output hashing none is um, if you don't do that, then these runtime files or whatever, they're going to have like a long hash after the end of it. And you're never going to be able to predict what that's going to be. You have to change it every time. So um, if you do the output hashing none, they're just going to come out exactly like this every single time. So cross my fingers and run this. Let's all cross our fingers together. Yeah. We need support here, guys. And you guys in the chat, too, cross your fingers, everybody. We're with you, Matt. Yeah. Thanks. We're not even worried. And then uh, I'll start. You said your prayers to the demo gods. <laughs> <laughs> I think there should be a uh, an offering to the demo gods for every show. Goat something. <laughs> A, a chicken, maybe. A chicken! <laughs> Dude, that's like attempted murder right now, Bonnie. Alyssa was wearing a chicken. No, wait, there's no chicken. The chicken's gone. It's fine. Don't worry. It. Listen, I had to get spooky, okay? I, I want to be more like you, Alyssa. You're so fun. I did, <laughs> I did actually find a hat. Oh. But it's not. But it's not like a. a... Uh, uh, you look so festive. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> I need a screenshot of this so bad. Hang on. Hang on. Don't you, look... you dare! No, it's, it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> if you tweet this, so help. <laughs> Thank you for this, Bonnie. You've made my day. I love you, Alyssa. <laughs> all right, all right. Looks like our okay. build finished, right? <laughs> still building it's done building i can't tell can you tell i think it's done i think matt's building can you guys are you can you guys hear me yeah we yes. got yeah. you now okay i think my internet's lagging yeah but okay, your mouth so... is moving with your audio right now this is good this is excellent <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay so i ran the http server which um it's just going to serve the files here. 
um, in that elements folder. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is, now I'm using this uh, just index.html folder or file in the, in the root directory. So this is like completely outside of Angular and I'm serving this file um, with the, the local HTTP server. So this is an Angular element com completely outside of Angular. And we, we could add the slots in here if we wanted to. Um, so that's what, so the reason it's not showing up with your H1 tag is because that file that you have it and you didn't add the slot to the markup. Is that what you're saying? That's right, yeah. Yeah, right. so we could add the, that slot in there and it, um, let's just try that. And then we have the, the new nice. title there. Yeah. I like it. Um, so this is just a separate index HTML file, not running with the ng serve on its own, right. where you have built that bundled JS file, import it into, or you know, bring it into this script, this HTML, and now you're rendering that same component in this different right. ecosystem. Very cool. Yep. Yeah, and so we're just importing the one elements.js file here, and then we're using this NGR component here. Are you able to go to that directory uh, and see the size of that JS? Oh, file? yeah. Um, yes. This one right here. Yeah. I was going to say go to Finder, but I'm. Been yeah, so. 168 kilobytes. Okay. Which is. It's pretty what is big it called? Cool. What is Finder okay. called on? File Explorer. Yeah. That's not too bad, but most of that's uh, framework based and not so much uh, component based as well. And I'm wondering if there's any optimizations that come so, out of using NGX Build Plus as well. Hello. Hi. Matt, Matt, are you there? Matt, Matt, did we lose? Matt, no, we lost him. <laughs> you might have froze up. So I think what? it was Fergus. Well, you know, Fergus, we love you because you're a troublemaker, Fergus. And he was saying at the top of the hour that uh, Angular Elements might be kind of a lot the size, right? But 168 kilobytes is pretty reasonable for all that functionality. You know, Bonnie, it's all gibberish to me. Like, kilobytes i don't know like how big is that is it the size of an image file it's is less that bigger than a, it's less than a megabyte for sure that, okay again you're speaking greek like <laughs> you just bring megabytes in the picture thanks for that bonnie <laughs> is, 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 is this that helping was, it's, yeah the mic's it's, helpful it's this Look. much versus this much which is reasonable <laughs> i think eris said i spoil what did i spoil y'all Oh, because uh, I said it before, because I, t I put it, oh, but yeah, because there's a delay, I'm sorry, because because I typed in the chat that it was going to be 168 kilobytes before the video, I think, I'm so sorry, Iris. Did you? Because I forgot about the delay, I, but I'm, no, I was just telling the size, I'm sorry, I didn't Bonnie, mean to. You cracked me Forgive up. Forgive me, I don't know how y'all put up with me. Matt, in Matt the house. Carson. Matt, in the house. We were so house. worried. I'm back. Um, we didn't know what to now. do, Matt. Because <laughs> Matt's in the house. I was done. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. We were just talking I about think that. This show is a lot sillier on yeah. Fridays, y'all. 
Yeah, so on that file size too, um, I think one of the other aspects that I can't remember the current state of elements and, and how we can do that, uh, but I think there was some talk or maybe we're already there where let's say you ship multiple elements, right? For the, each of your element builds to understand that the framework itself, Angular itself that needs to drive it is already in that um, site, right? Or we're provided in that site. And so could you build and ship separate elements, JS files and have them understand that, hey, their payloads don't need to be that big because the actual Angular framework part that's needed is already on the page running somewhere, right? Um, I know there's discussion around that. I don't know the details right now. It's that, but that's another concept there, right? Cool. Um, I could. Uh, I've got a couple more slides. If you, if we have time. Yeah, um, for sure. Just, we still have a good amount of minutes. So, will you want to throw those back up? Yeah. All right, got him up there. So the the last thing I'll go over is how to deploy this to the cloud. Um, and I'm going to use Firebase because that's just what I normally use. But I'm sure you can do the same thing on AWS or Azure um, or whatever you use. But the steps to, to get this going on Firebase um, is just going to be to install the CLI globally if you haven't already done so. Then you run the Firebase init to initialize the new project. And then um, you just change the public folder uh, to the elements folder. And then you run deploy. So we'll close this out. And, and is this for deploying your JS build that you did of the elements so that then other third parties could bring it in? Or is this also including your index HTML for the component? Yeah, this is uh, this is just that elements.js folder. And then they would write their own they would write their own index.html folder. I'm going to select hosting. And then here it's going to ask the public directory. This is going to be where it's going to be elements. And that's just telling Firebase what folder do you want to host in Firebase hosting, correct? I'm sorry? That's telling Firebase that, hey, what I want you to host is inside this directory. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah, so now I'm just going to do Firebase deploy. OK, and then it's going to give us this. This link here. Which I'll copy and then I'm gonna just put that inside the this index.html. So instead of the local one, I'm gonna paste that in. Okay. And then yeah, let's see. So yeah, so I think it's it's working there. So if we go to this, oh, I gotta go. So now we have that elements.js hosted on this Firebase uh, or link here. Thank you, so Firebase. Yeah, that is cool. Very cool. So um, a couple of resources I found pretty helpful when I um, was learning this. There's a, 
a deep look at angular elements by Manfred Steyer. It's like an hour and 17 minutes, I think. Um, and he goes pretty deep on like um, polyfills and getting it to work with uh, Internet Explorer. So that if you're interested in this, that's a great video to watch. And then advanced angular elements by Fireship is another good one. Um, and these guys are both really, really nice people too. If that, if you care about that, I really like, they're good teachers. I think yeah. that's a bonus. Yeah, they, they both are. Pretty much anything <laughs> on fire ship draws me in. Good, good music. We love you, Jeff Delaney, if you're watching. And you too, Manfred Steyer. And Wait. Manfred. And, and Manfred. Manfred, we love both of you. If he's not <laughs> watching, does that mean you don't like him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I think we still like him even if he's not watching. We'll just give him some anonymous love and he'll feel it even if yeah, he doesn't know. I am so sorry for harassing you about your Twitter handle. I was like, it wouldn't autofill. And it was like, that's not a person. It kept bringing up some basketball, football player. I don't know. And I was like, I don't think that's this bad, but maybe. I don't, I don't want to judge. Maybe. <laughs> Did you get it? I did. I did get it. I'm sorry okay. about that. I, I was having a very special morning, so we're good. <laughs> Any other questions from you guys? Or there is a question from Felipe. Can we use other? Did you did you answer that? Did you? I was about to, but yeah, let's talk about it. I I think he wants to know if you can use someone else's elements in your project, and I say yes, you absolutely can if you trust them, Felipe. And also, is there an official library of elements? And I don't think there is an official one. I mean, can't you just see the code and know what it's Mike, doing, Mike, you're, you're talking, like, but you're muted. I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I, was letting, I was letting Alyssa finish. Oh. Um, yes, you can use other people's elements if they publish them and if they make them available. Um, that, that, that's the big caveat there. And if you trust them. Yeah, you should probably trust them. Uh, the, yeah. the, the things that you're pulling into an application, but that's true of anything, whether or not it, not just an Angular element, but any dependencies. Make sure you trust the code you're bringing in because it may end up with access to information that it may not want. Don't let Fergus Please. change mod your your uh, outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't and, like and the don't pumpkin. trust anybody in a chicken suit. Um, <laughs> as, as for the library oh, of words. elements i don't think there's anything specific out there um that is basically a library of different elements angular elements to use but if anyone knows of one please let us know because we would want to know about that uh and if you want that's to use a good the question one we created today you can go back and all right today is that a that GitHub repo that you have on the screen right now? Um, yes. Yeah, yes, that's basically is. what we went over today. <laughs> Alyssa, with the costume um, change. But if you that's want, you could go funny. that. Sorry, Matt. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. It's Alyssa's fault. Okay. Um, you could use that Firebase uh, link that we had. Let me pull it up here. So if you can read that um, Angular da dash elements one, you could technically use this in your project just to try it out, and you should be able to get what we use today. So that's if you trust me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Philippe. You can use Matt's element in your project if you trust him. And uh, okay, we're almost out of quite out of time, but uh, Eris also asked a really good question. Can we use the same bundle for Angular application? Also, or sh because this is the thing, if you have more than one element on your page, then that could easily get inefficient. If you're like bundling the same node modules multiple times, you don't want that. You want them to same pull from the same. So you can't use the same bundle for different elements, right? No, well, you, you can, you, like, are you saying, can you have like five elements under one bundle? You can, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. Harris, yes, you can then. That's good. But I'm wondering if the question is like, 
Yeah, I'm wondering if if the question is like if we use the same bundle that we bundle our when we have that element or that Angular component in our Angular app, and we build our Angular app as the same bundle we use for Elements bundle. Um, if that's the question, then what we saw earlier, which was that you're writing separate code to build and, and bundle your Elements instance of that component versus say if you have it in your if you're using that component in your Angular app. It's just part of your regular Angular app build, right? So they're two separate builds and bundles. If you're using this like button component inside of your Angular app, you're just using it in your normal way that you're used to with Angular, and it's it's there, right? But you could also have separate code that takes that same component, that button component, and bundles it for element distribution, and have two ways to to deliver it and to use it, right? All right, I guess we're at the top of the hour, so we better uh, wrap things up. We're going to do some picks, and then uh, we'll call it a show. Our panelists, anybody have any picks today? Bonnie? I have two picks today. My first pick is the amazing Alyssa Nichol and her costume changes, because that was really fun. And, uh, and, and my second pick is... Uh, Matt, Matt, I was really impressed with you because you kept it together despite a lot of, you know, unprofessional, distracting behavior from the panelists. We apologize for that, but we're also really impressed with you. And then I know I said two, but I have three because right after this, we're doing a, a community hangouts on Angular Nation with Matt Carson. He's coming with us. So if you have more questions about Angular Elements, what is up with Mike Brocky's face? What are you doing? <laughs> Disturbing behavior by panelists. Yeah. No, I wasn't talking about you. No, I was talking about me, Alyssa. Cute. Yeah. See that I knew I was on that list, but I I was straight up player. I don't mess around. You were very (laughs) professional and very helpful, Mike. And I think you were an asset to Matt, unlike me and Alyssa. (laughs) But that's okay. But it was fun. I hope that's okay, Matt. You did great. All right, nice, nice, nice picks, Bonnie. That was good. Thank you, uh, Alyssa, Mike. You guys have any picks? I just want to say thank you to this amazing crew. Uh, they were on Code It Live, the Twitch channel, with me last week to do a mukbang. Check out that recording if you missed it. And honestly, they kind of like centered me and like brought me back to like okayness. And I just want to thank you for that. You always have my back, and you're just amazing community influencers. So thanks. We love you. Uh-huh. you. All kinds of love. I love it. All right. I thought of a pick. Right, I do- I, what? I thought of a pick. Uh-oh, you probably thought of my pick. Go for it. Did it release today? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're going along the same line. <laughs> What's your my pick? pick, is Justin's pick. pick because Justin's picks are the best. Go ahead, Justin. <laughs> oh, okay. My pick is uh, Mandalorian Season 2. Is that your pick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's out today. Uh, big Star Wars fan here. Can't wait for that to go. So got a little bit of work to do after our episode, and then I'm on to watching that. So can't I wait. didn't know it dropped. I'm so glad you told me. <gasps> yeah, so don't get on the Twitters or anything and, and get spoiled. Like, you know, wait. <laughs> I don't know. So that's my pick. All right, our guest, Matt, uh, do you have anything that you want to do as a pick? Yeah, um, I was going to do the Manfred Steyer talk, but since I already talked about that, I'm going to pick um, two shows that I've re- recently watched on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, neither one of them is really that new, but Central Park, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of that or seen that. It's, it's an animated series. It's um, kind of like a musical animated series. I think Josh... Gad created it, and it's got a few people from Hamilton in it. Oh, but that sounds it's a really fantastic. good show. And then um, <laughs> Ted Lasso. Oh my gosh! Yes, and also, is there another season coming? Does anybody know? Of Nobody which knows? one? Ted Lasso, because it's just—it's like one of those shows you watch, and it makes you oh, feel better so. instead of worse. So I'm like, please, more seasons, like. <laughs> We yeah, I think there's a, the I think world. they've ordered a season two, but that's yeah. Cool, cool. Well, I feel like I'm right, delayed, well, but hopefully you caught that. Yeah. There is a little delay, but I think we got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
for sure. Awesome. Well, hey, Matt, thanks a ton for coming on our show and sharing your time and sharing your knowledge. We really appreciate having you on. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, that's a wrap. Have a good one, everyone. We'll catch you next time. See ya.